Hello everybody and welcome to Daily Entomologist and uh, this is actually a requested video um, to take a closer look at uh, the Hymenoptera in my collection. So, um, I don't want this video to be too extremely long, so we're just going to take uh, another uh, overview of uh, the drawers, or at least some of the drawers of Hymenoptera, and uh, show you guys a couple uh, different things, and uh, take a look at uh, some of the different families and everything. So, there's going to be a couple in this uh, box here, of the larger stuff. Especially down in that corner. A beautiful bee right there, really fuzzy. Um, a lot of small stuff in here, but some uh, larger stuff as well. Uh, I'm going to take a couple specimens out, uh, separate them in here so we can just get a closer look at them as well. Alright, so here are a couple specimens from that box that I decided to take out and uh, showcase. Um, here we have a Eastern uh, Cicada Killer. Beautiful, huge, large wasp. And as the name suggests, they feed on cicadas and are harmless to humans and uh, generally won't bother you. Um, here we have a common uh, site is a, a eastern carpenter bee right next to it and what looks kind of similar is a Patilithrix bombiformis. It's a bee I found a lot of in Arkansas. Mostly around uh, wetlands. Here, this beautiful specimen, is, I believe uh, it is some sort of scolded wasp. Um, you see a really gorgeous um, orange stripes on the abdomen with the yellow dots. Really beautiful species. Here we have a uh, elm sawfly. Um, this is a larger species of sawfly. And uh, most simple. Majority of sawflies are quite small. This uh, species is one of the exceptions. Nice large. Um, so just a uh, some of the species here in this drawer. I'll keep on going. All right, so there's some really awesome uh, specimens in this drawer as well. A lot of medium and uh, some large specimens in here. Um, some really nice wasps and some fantastic bees as well. Um, I have a couple I'm gonna pull out here to uh, show you. Including uh, some of these. Get a closer look at those. And got some, uh, as I said, got some really, really awesome species in here. So, I'm gonna go ahead uh, get four or five specimens out and we can take a look at them. All right, so these are the specimens I pulled out. Um, I'm gonna try and uh, get a better light here. See here. We have a beautiful palicinid wasp. Um, really unique, beautiful, cool looking species. Um, 
unfortunate to get a collect a few specimens of this. Um, I've seen them pretty commonly in Wisconsin growing up. I saw them quite often. And uh, just a really, like I said, unique looking, really awesome species. Another pretty uh, uh, unique looking species here as well. Collected back in Wisconsin. Really nice pattern. Just a pretty cool specimen. Um, and here we have a member of the uh, tarantula hawk wasps. Um, it is not the genus Pepsis, it's a different genus. Um, Antipas, maybe? Antipas? Anyway, um, I've seen these uh, quite often here. Um, really nice orange yellow antenna. The orange, uh, the orange wings, black body, large size. Not as impressive as the large Pepsis, but still an impressive wasp indeed. And uh, I've been fortunate to uh, come across quite a number of individuals. Um, next up here, we have a golden digger wasp. Another beautiful large species, you can see that golden coloration on there. Pretty common species that I find out east, and I've seen it out here in Colorado as well. And a uh, really beautiful uh, cuckoo wasp specimen. Really nice metallic. Cuckoo wasps are one of my favorite um, families. Um, this is a rather large species, an individual. A lot of cuckoo wasps are smaller, but all share the beautiful coloration, metallic, blue, green, more just beautiful, beautiful wasps. And uh, was uh, just a uh, the uh, specimens from that drawer and uh, continue on. All right, so really not much more really interesting to show on the other few drawers, um, but it isn't a hymenopter uh, video without looking at ants as well, because ants are also in the order hymenoptera. Um, so I have uh, this organized a drawer of ants and I have a more organized drawer of bumblebees we're gonna look at as well. Just to show you um, kind of how I will organize all, well basically my whole collection, but my Hymenoptera. So here is a, a finished drawer of ants. And when I say finished, I mean the spec these specimens are all labeled and databased and identified. Um, so, and obviously drawers will continually evolve and have more specimens and change up. But when I say finished, I mean trays of identified species and labeled and everything. Um, so, for example, in here, I have a uh, Campanotus species. Got some uh, Lasius, Pagonal Miramax, Ada, 
the leaf cutter ant right there. I uh, got a couple uh, pseudo myrmets. My one lone specimen of cephalodes. Um, of course, we have uh, Formica. We have this uh, this particular species is obscure adventurous. Um, this is Tetramorum immigrans. This is the species, uh, the ants you see on the sidewalks and big colony wars. So that's this species in the U.S. at least in most areas. Got some other, some more Campanotus up here, Neurotychus, Arculianus. That's a Pagodal Myrmetrogrosis. We have Barbados. And I have Occidentalis as well. Um, so yeah. Just uh, another portion of uh, my Hymenopterons. I love ants, they're so awesome. Here is a drawer of bumblebees. I consider this drawer semi-organized because I have them labeled, identified, but I don't have spe uh, species, individual species and unit trays like I do with my ants. So getting them in their species specific unit trays is, will be the next step in this. Um, I actually have a bunch of bumblebees I still need to go through and identify and get labels on. Um, we're just going to go through a couple species here of Bombus and Patience. Uh, this is a pretty common, one of the more common species found in the U.S. Um, Bombus and Patience and Bombus vegans are pretty uh, common to find. Um, back home in Wisconsin, Bombus ternarius. Um, really common species. Um, here in the West, Bombus huntii is probably I would consider the most common, commonly encountered species. Um, this is a really cool species uh, right here. Bombus episodus, epositus. Um, I really like that uh, species. Um, we have uh, Bombus centralis, Bombus griseocollis. That's pretty common here in Colorado. Uh, Mixtus pennsylvanicus. Um, got some cuckoo bumblebees. Uh, Bombus uh, insularis right there. Um... There, oh, some more among other species, Bombus succulii. Those are uh, cuckoo bumblebees. And what I mean by cuckoo bumblebees is they are parasitic on under other bumblebee species. So they're generally not collected very often. But I think this year I added a third species of cuckoo bumblebees to my collection. If you can't tell, I really love bumblebees. They're a really growing part of my collection. Um, so we got some uh, Occidentalis there, Bimaculatus borealis, just a whole bunch of different species. I think I'm up to, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. I have 24 bumblebee species in this drawer. Um, I'm hoping I added at least another two or three this year from up in the mountains. But, uh, yeah. So, I think that's going to be the end of this video. Um, just, to, uh, as I said, just a closer look at some of the hymenopterans in my collection as requested um so madi mad i think it's madi i think i don't know how you pronounce it um this was your video you requested so i hope this gave you a closer look at some of the specimens and uh, species i have 
So uh, comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.